In this lesson, we're looking at key features of linear, quadratic, and exponential functions. Um, this lesson is intended for students who've taken algebra and geometry and who are getting ready to go into algebra 2. So this is just a, a readiness for algebra 2 lesson, and we're gonna, uh, I'm going to give you an overview of linear, quadratic, and exponential functions. So let's get started. First, let's take a look at interval notation. Hopefully you recall what it is, but if not, it is just a way of writing subsets of the real number line. And we have an example here of interval notation. And we're looking at these brackets here. So in interval notation, we just write the beginning and ending numbers of the interval. And we use the square bracket. When we want to include that end value but we use that round bracket when we don't want to include those end values. So let's take a look at some examples here. So for the inequality, it says that x is greater than negative infinity but less than positive infinity. Uh, we have our infinity signs here, but we have a round brackets because we're not including uh, these the infinity, uh, these numbers here, or the infinity sign. Um, because we don't have that equal to sign underneath. So remember, um, when you solve your inequality problems and you graphed it, if you had uh, that equal to sign underneath like this, you shade it in that circle to include that value. But we don't shade when we don't want to include it. So same concept here where we don't have that equal to sign underneath. So we're not including those end values there. The second one here says x is greater than or equal to negative 4, but less than or equal to 25. And so, of course, here, since we have these equal to signs underneath, we have the square brackets because we are including negative 4 and 25. Right here, we have a combination. So x is greater than 10, but less than or equal to 100. We have this round bracket here because we don't have the equal to sign underneath. But we have the closed bracket here because we do have that equal to sign underneath. And so we could have a combination of both, one that includes and one that does not include. And the last one we have here, x is greater than or equal to negative 15, but less than infinity. So again, including that negative 15 here, um, but it is uh, less than or equal to uh, positive infinity. We're not including pos positive infinity, and so of course it will just stop at zero. So that is why um, we have this zero here because we're not including um, the positive infinity. And here we have the first type of function we're going to look at is the linear function, and that this is an equation in what form? Hopefully you recall what form this is in or what formula this is. This is slope intercept, and so we have y equals mx plus b. What does that m stand for? Well, the m stands for your slope. It is the change in your y value over the change in your x. If you have uh, the graph, or if you have your uh, your two points, so with the graph, you would use rise over run. You would just count those spaces there. But if you had a graph, you would uh, pick have the pick have those ordered pairs there and then you would uh, plug in for x1 y1 and x2 y2 remember x1 and y1 are the coordinates for for that first point and x2 y2 are the coordinates for that second point there so now looking at b remember what does that b stand for well it is the y-intercept which is where that graph crosses the y-axis now let's take a look at the line of a, or the graph of a linear function, which is a line. And so first, let's look at this x-intercept here. This is where the graph crosses the x-axis. And so of course, uh, this is at the ordered pair negative to zero. But of course, if it's the x-intercept, your y value would be zero. Next, we're looking at the y-intercept right here. This is where the graph crosses the y-axis, and so your x value for the ordered pair would be zero. And then we're looking at the slope, which is your change in y over your change in x. And so if you have a graph, you know, you could just count the spaces, picking two points on that graph, 
um, I like to start at the point closest to the left. Um, we can count um, up one, two, so our rise is two. We can count over one, two, so our run is two. And so the slope here would be one. And if you notice, you can add, also count back or uh, to the right and up as well. But either way, you're gonna get a one for your slope here. So let's take a look at this graph here. We wanna answer the following questions. It says, what is the y-intercept? Well, the y-intercept is right here on this point here, and that is the point zero negative six because that is on the y-axis. What is the x-intercept? It is right here. That is at the point four zero. So again, you have zero for your, your x value if you have your y-intercept and zero for your y value if you have your x-intercept. Now we want to find the slope. I like to pick two points that are close to each other and make sure you pick points that are on the intersections of your grids there. So I couldn't like pick this one here. All right, and then I'm just gonna count my spaces. I like to start at the point closest to the left. So I count up, one, two, three. My rise is three. And then to the right, one, two. So my rise is three, my run is two. So my slope is three over two. Um, you could also go to the right and up either way. You will get the same uh, rise and run. Uh, the next one, what is the domain of the function? If you have a line, so this is understood that it is, this is continuous because it doesn't have endpoints here. The domain is all real numbers and you can see we have that as an inequality and interval notation there. And then the last one here, it says, is the function increasing or decreasing from zero to three? And so that is increasing because that graph, we read up, well, we read from left to right. This graph is going um, up from left to right and so it is increasing. And if we look from zero to three right here, that graph is going up or it is increasing. So let's analyze this linear function using a table. Hopefully you recall this information. So this is again, just a review. So what is the y-intercept? Again, uh, that is where your x value would have to be zero. We don't have any x values of zero up here, right? But we have a one, and so if we're counting down, right? So if we look at this, the trend here, the point here would be zero, so what will my y value be? Well, if we look at from four to three, because we counted down one for our x, look at the pattern here. It goes from negative nine to negative six, and so my y value went up by three, and so my y value from when x is zero would be three. So that is my x-intercept of zero, three. Now, the next one, it says, what is the x-intercept? Again, your y value would have to be zero. So that would be right here. All right, so one, zero. What is the slope? Um, you could do your x2 minus x1, like pick two ordered pairs, right, and plug it in. Or you could look at the pattern because if I notice that I have my x values going by one or uh, decreasing by one right here, um, I could see my pattern here that is going up by three, so my slope is three. But if you did not see that, right, you just pick two ordered pairs. So if I pick these two, right, x1, y1, x2, y2, plugging it into my slope formula, um, y2 minus y1 is negative 6 minus 0. Uh, x2 minus x1, or x sub 1, 3 minus 1. And then that would be um, a negative 6 over 2. And that, of course, reduces to negative 3 for the slope. Uh, next, it says, what is the domain? Remember, the domain is uh, uh, your x values uh, or your independent variable where that graph reaches horizontally. So the inequality would be from one to six. We're including the one and the six because we have it on this table here. So X is greater than one or equal to one, but less than six. Then we have our interval notation here because um, uh, it is including one and six. Uh, we have the square brackets here. 
And last, it says, is the function increasing or decreasing from 1 to 4? So from 1 to 4, looking at our x values here, what's happening with our y values? It is decreasing because it goes from 0 to negative 6 to negative 9. And so uh, we've analyzed this table here. Next, we're taking a look at quadratic functions. And we have a graph of a quadratic function here. The vertex is the maximum or minimum or the turning point on the parabola. And that is right here. See? All right. Axis of symmetry. The x value of the vertex, x equals 0. So right here. Or you could say that that is where the graph cuts. Uh, the line that cuts the graph in half equally into two equal parts. So the line that is in the center of the graph. X-intercepts, where that graph crosses the X-axis. So right here and here, negative 2, 0, and 2, 0. Y-intercept, where does that graph cross the Y-axis? It is at 0, 4. Again, right here. And maximum and minimum. Which one does it have since the graph goes down? It has a highest point. Uh, it is y equals 4 because this graph um, goes down. It has a maximum at y equals 4. I would like for you to try this problem on your own. Go ahead and look at the graph. You also have the, the equation there, so hopefully you remember some of this uh, from algebra. But go ahead and pause the video and try these uh, try to answer these problems here on your own. All right, so you have the answers here. Go ahead and just pause the video and check your answers. If you didn't get one correct, just keep the video paused a little longer and analyze the answers here a little bit more. But go ahead and just pause if you haven't checked your answers uh, to finish checking them. So now let's take a look at quadratic functions on a table. And again, we want to identify the key features. So for A, it says, what is the vertex? And so the vertex will actually be 250 because if we look here, there would also be our maximum because it is the highest point on the graph. So this is our Y value here or our output. So this would be our, our vertex here. All right, the axis of symmetry. Uh, that is uh, x equals 2. So it is just the x value of the vertex. The y-intercept, it is 0, 0,42. So remember that is where your x is 0. The x-intercept, again, that is where your y is 0. So that would be uh, 7, 0. The maximum, that is the y value of your vertex. And that would be y is equal to 50. Uh, what is the domain of the table? It is from 0 to 7, so you're looking at your x values, and we have an interval notation as well as an inequality. Uh, x is greater than or equal to 0, but less than or equal to 7. Is the function increasing or decreasing from 2 to 4? So right here, all right, and that is decreasing because it goes from 50 to 48 to 42. The last type of function we're looking at is exponential function. So we looked at linear, quadratic, and now we're looking at exponential. So hopefully you recall this formula here. f of x is equal to a times b of x, or, or b to the x power, rather. And that a is the initial value, which is also your y-intercept. And again, it's the initial value of the function when x is 0 if you were looking at a table. And a cannot uh, equal 0. And if we're looking at B, that is uh, the common ratio. It is the factor multiplied for each increase in X. So this is uh, the formula for an exponential function. And B has to be greater than zero and it cannot equal one. And other ways that you could see exponential functions you may have the time symbol in the middle between A and B, or you may not see that time symbol, which is here. It may just be a b to the x power, or you may have uh, your parentheses here with b being in parentheses. Um, so again, this is exponential function, standard form. 
So let's take a look at the key features of this graph here. First, we want to look at the, uh, the y-intercept or that initial value, and that is at 0, 2 right here. That's where the graph crosses the y-axis. And let's look at our change here, our common ratio. It is times 2 each time, so the change from here to here, we have it at 2. And then here it is at 4, so that is being multiplied by 2. If we wanted to write an equation, we could say f of x is equal to our a, which is that initial value is 2, and our b uh, is uh, 2, that common ratio is 2, uh, raised to the x power. So let's answer some questions involving the graph of this exponential function here. And the y-intercept, so we're looking at an a, the y-intercept is uh, 0, 4. Right here, that is where that graph crosses the y-axis. What is the common ratio? Well, we see here that it is 1 half. We can look at the equation here, or 0 0.5. And if you notice, this graph falls from left to right, right? And so the change here would be 4. And then from here to here, this is at 2. And so uh, 2 is half of 4. So that would be my common ratio there at uh, 0 0.5. What is the domain of this graph here? It is um, from, pos from negative infinity to positive infinity um, or all real numbers. So either way you want to write that. And D, it says, is the function increasing or, incre or decreasing from 0 to 2? So from this interval right here, and that is, of course, decreasing. It is going down from 0 to 2. And the last example we want to look at is analyzing this table here of an exponential function. What is the y-intercept? Well, it is a 0, negative 2 because our x value is 0, so that would be our y-intercept. What is the common ratio? That common ratio is 4. As you can see here, from here to here, um, 0 0.5, negative 0 0.5 times 4 is negative 2. And negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. And negative 8 times 4 is negative 32. And so our common ratio here would be 4. We've reached the end of our lesson. I want to thank you for learning with me. Some related videos are key features of polynomial, radical, and trig functions, as well as interpreting the key features of quadratic, linear, and exponential functions. And so that is where you actually look at real-life situations, um, looking at graphs and scenarios with uh, these type of functions. It's also intro into quadratics and not listed here, but as well as uh, writing exponential functions. So those are all videos that are related to this lesson. If you haven't already, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also click the bell to be notified when I post new content. And once again, I want to thank you for learning with me.